Hello, I'm Leanne Lau, investment writer at Mirai Asset Global Investments, and here with me today is Marcus Chu, an investment analyst. It's great to have you here with us today, Marcus. We saw a drastic acceleration in demand for automation solutions in the first half of 2021. What does demand look like now in the wake of the recent events in China? The overall demand remains fairly resilient in the second half of 2021, sustaining the growth we saw in the first half. In China, the overall demand remains fairly healthy, but we do face a couple of headwinds, such as the power shortages in September, the resurgence of COVID-19, and also the property market concern in October. All these, to a certain extent, have delayed the capital spending schedules of the corporates. On the countries, the demand from developed markets, such as US and Europe, has actually accelerated much better than anticipations, mainly because of the market further reopens because of the COVID-19. Despite these events, it sounds like demand hasn't waned at all. In fact, it's quite the contrary. Businesses are now trying to find solutions to fill this gap with these tasks that don't necessarily need to be done by humans. So what's really driving this demand? During the pandemic, Corporates face multiple issues in their own supply chains, including labor availability issues, shipping issues, and also logistic issues. So industry leaders are actually, during the pandemic, more willing to adopt automation solutions in their own factories and plants. With more of these use cases being implemented, the industry followers now have a better examples to understand what is the benefits of automations to be applied to their own plants and factories, particularly the quantitative impacts for example, the return on investments and also the payback period. So this use cases and also this scenarios create a very positive loop for the industry players and also for the demand to grow further. So on the back of the global pandemic, it accelerated the use of automation processes. Which end markets in particular do you see this affecting? The automation solutions accelerations has actually happened all across all the verticals that we have seen. Um, in particular, there are high growth end markets that we have seen a very fast adoptions, for example, along the battery supply chain and also along the renewable energies. We also see a faster adoption in traditional manufacturing verticals such as steel, construction machineries, oil and gas, and even furniture. A positive development on the customer end then. So let's switch over to the supply side. Are robotics manufacturers capable of meeting this demand? Based on the recent results and communication with the corporates, the robotic manufacturers are growing their top line at a very decent rate. Some of them also have planned to grow their capacity further to cater to growing demand. But before this capacity comes into the market, we expect the product lead time to extend further, which is a pretty good scenario for these manufacturers to operate in. I now want to turn to the other side of the sector. Industrial robots are typically made from cast iron, aluminium and steel, with raw material price inflation very much present throughout the first half of 2021. What are the wider implications? We have not seen a massive increase in the price of raw material prices into the second half of 2021, including the raw materials that we just discussed. So for the robotic manufacturers, they are actually started passing through some of the cost inflations that they have faced in the first half to the end customers in the second half by raising the product prices. As we head into 2022, what are the main issues robotics and automation players face within the industry? Earlier this year, the main concern is around raw material cost inflations. In the second half of 2021, the challenge has extended into the supply chain management. So that Japanese manufacturers have mentioned tightness across all the components that they are sourcing right now. This is broadly consistent to the long production lead time mentioned by the component suppliers. This risk is extended into 2022. So there's a lot going on in this sector right now. Who do you think will be the potential winners in the year ahead? We prefer companies that are able to stay on top of the lead and are able to provide competitive solutions to customers because they are often the ones that are reached out by the industry leaders when they want to adopt automation solutions. We also prefer companies that are able to manage their supply chain well enough, much better than the others. And we think these two group of companies will be well positioned for the year ahead. Thank you, Marcus. It's been great to hear your thoughts on how robotics and automation firms have thrived amid the global pandemic. Thanks for your time again. And we look forward to sharing more insights in our upcoming videos. Thank you.